hi, you guys all know me because there's nobody new here today except for Chris, and Chris is not talking to us. Chris, you training dogs? Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. So let's start right in. What problems are you guys having with the buyer's journey? Mike, I'll bet you haven't done anything with it. Other than the fact that they don't have any money, everything else is fine. <laughs> Start that over. I got the don't have any money part. I, I said, well, that's the only problem I have is they get all the way to the point where they have to pay and then they go, oops. Really? Yeah, that's why I, that's why I uh, I'm on the wrong profile again. My larger profile. One person said, "What could I hire you?" Yeah, but this is what we get. It goes, oh, okay. So, other yeah, than please. that, some of my clients, yes, there's always things with the buyer's journey that could be tweaked and changed based on the uh, you know your target audience because every consumer is fickle. They have different ways of uh, of looking at things, but. Well, Fortunately, we don't have many, many issues. Let's back up for a second. If you've got people who have hit your buyer's journey and gone through the three stages, and when they get to the third stage, you're saying that they just bounce? Oh, no, they don't bounce. Some of them will want to talk to me. And then when they ask what our fee structure is, um, they disappear. So they still talk oh, to no. us. But... Oh, oh, oh. Well, that happens to me, too. That sounds to me more of it, it maybe not that you intended it, but it sounds more like a bait and switch. Does that make sense? Whatever you targeted for the keyword for the buyer's journey, it may have targeted the wrong people for what you're trying to get them to do. No, even some, I'd say some larger businesses, but still aren't that big. Uh, you know, my primary role in my larger company is fractional chief marketing officer. That's not something that most people need or can afford. Uh, so they come in and they want our marketing services. And I go, oh, yeah, you can do A, B, and C. But, and they say, well, what do you charge? And when I tell them, they go, ouch. Yeah, but that's okay. Uh, that's why we typically only take people through referrals in my larger company so that we don't have to deal with that. It's just, it's just too much of an issue. What's on your action page, your decision page? <laughs> uh, after listing our services, it's contact us because we don't put any pricing on the website. That would be absolutely absurd. Um, what are you are... going through uh, steps one, two, and three? When they hit three, they go to what page? They'll, they'll go to a, a page uh, that will describe... Um, how to contact us, how to contract with us, and then they click on that and it automatically sets an appointment. So it is an actual action step. So the call to action is press here, they contact us, and then, uh, that, which is the primary reason why it, it's not so good for me specifically because of our very small core business and what we actually target in the larger company and the fact that uh, we don't apologize for being that expensive, but we are. And I'm the first one to tell you, I am really expensive. I'm I'm not anywhere near on the on the lower end of the scale. Okay, so so back up and let's think of you've got people on the hook. That's that's where I'm trying to see where the disjoint is. And I have a good idea, thanks to Maury. You've got them through stage one, two, and three. And you even got them to go to the action page just exactly like you wanted to. Uh -huh. Then you fell flat. True or false so far? It's not that I fell flat because we get we get the contact. Yes. So, yeah. But what the design of the buyer's journey was fell flat, correct? Uh, yes, because we really don't want to talk to anybody other than enterprise level. And we we've made that relatively specific, but they still think, well, as, I'll give you a very simple example. They well, want us to manage our... Hold, hold on a second. I, I get where you're going. You got them right up to the point where you need to sell them. 
don't know if we need to sell them. We, we can because they get to that point where they talk to us and then that's they the, obviously that realize. Was, so yeah. the sales portion of the buyer's journey is not, there's nothing wrong with it because it did its job to attract the traffic. You fell flat when they're calling. And yeah, because they, they when, didn't understand our, you know, ultimately our cost. fee structure. If they ask for the cost right away, there hasn't been any discussion about what it is that they're actually going to get. So the sales portion has not done its job. Why are you using the buyer's journey pages? Just as a structure, our, our yeah. whole website yeah. per se is built as a demonstration model of how to do different things. It's not necessarily for us to acquire business. On your buyer's journey pages, you have to consider not only the keywords that you're targeting, but the specific audience you are trying to target. So what I'm saying is you have a disconnect between who you're targeting and why. Oh, I would agree with you because we're not even using the website to get business. Yes, but if you're not using the website to get business and you've got the buyer journey pages, you're you're doing the opposite. You're saying we want we need new business. We want you to come so we can I I'm having a difficult time understanding why you use the buyer's journey pages if you don't need them. Just to have a creation so people can see the flow of how to set set it up, how you get from an information, you know, to, through the whole process, what it would look like. Because I'm not going to put all the information on one page. Uh, you know, so how do you get them from step to step to step? Um, but in my case, I'm not trying to close anybody there. Uh, it's honestly, you know, I, I, it sounds sort of cocky, but I'm not interested. Because unless you're doing the volumes I'm looking for, um, the discussions are sometimes, uh, you know, a waste of time for me and for them, not just for me, um, because of, of the fees that I can garner. So it's, but it's still set up. So if one of my clients wanted to say, you know, why would you do A, B, and C? Here's why. This is where you would start it. This is the information that needs to be here. These are the keywords you would select. Here's as you move through the process there. And of course, the last step, you know, with the call to action to get them to do something. In most of my clients' businesses, they do make sales directly off of the website or they have a legitimate reason to call because they're focusing on a much broader scale of business than we do. Then on the action page where you're telling them to take a specific action, that seems to be the disconnect. Well, it's for it's for more information. Contact well, us. You, I understand that, and that's really what you are. But that, that's not coming clear from the buyer's journey pages. So what I'm suggesting is that you put something on the action page that's very specific. That they've gone through that. Let them know what it is that you that you do, and they probably already have a good idea by that point. But you also want to let them know somehow that it is for major corporations or you call it whatever that you want. Uh -huh. It's not for the small business or the independent business. You know, oh, if you, I, think oh. you have something on that action page that lets people know, oh, it may not have the price, but they understand some kind of verbiage that's telling them this is not cheap. If you're looking for something cheap, that's not our. That's not what we do. And you're right. And we don't have a thing that lists our criteria on it. Because our criteria, our, that, and that's probably the part that you would say is missing. Because if we listed everything, fifty million dollars well, minimum revenue, and we go right down the list, so that would eliminate most people. You don't even have to go through that part. If you at least just mention something that is obvious, this is for larger corporations you, you don't have always... to part because they can afford it <laughs> exactly the work as and you would say the same thing the work is just as hard sometimes for a smaller business as it is for a bigger one maybe not the time demands but right. the work is the same yeah so tom and mike uh, you could yeah. use the words for enterprise level businesses somewhere in on that 
final page. And that's kind of one of those things where as a small business, I'm going, well, I don't know what enterprise is great because this isn't for you. So they would probably be scared off at that point and go, well, this isn't for me. So then they don't even bother trying. To... So at least because if you're not really trying to get that to create new uh, business, it's no skin off your nose. If you're honest on that action page, saying something along the lines of this may not be for you. Hmm. Well, you saw one of the proposals because I said, you know, would you be interested in yeah, partnering with yeah. this? So that's the size I work with. So that that's not small business at all. You just mentioned the, you don't need to mention the, the well, maybe you do. A couple of different, our, our typical client would be somebody like blah, blah, and blah, blah. And of course, then the small business is going to see that and go, oh, that's not me. How about uh, Barbara? How's things going with you? Have you tried the buyer journey? You're muted. I have tried it and I've tried it for, I tried it for something very specific because I'm having real problems get with one brand that I carry. And I know we, you, we've been through this and most for most of the brands I carry, I come up on page one or two at the at the worst. And this one brand I have been <laughs> struggling with, and it's like every time I look at it, I'm, I'm like on page 46. Or I'm, you know, it's it's unbelievably ridiculous. And yet if I Google individual products within that brand, I'm on page one. You know, my my merchant listings are fine. I'm getting sales. But if I just Google Via Gaia Clothing, I come up on page 46 and I've disappeared. And it's below, like, people who don't, like, websites that are, like, scam websites. So I put in Buyer's Journey because I couldn't, I can't figure out what is going on with that, what I'm missing. Um and it doesn't seem to have had any impact on it, although it's. Give me, give me uh, an example of a keyword term that somebody would search that one of your products comes up on page one. And then I want to do the one that doesn't come up. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you Google, um, Via Gallo and it's V I L A G A L L O. Irina Blouse and it's I R I N A Blouse. Okay, so that's bringing up the, the Google uh, market. What do you call that? Uh, merchant. Merchant. Yeah. Right. But if you just go to all, um, um I'm on all but that's that's what first comes up and then I see that you're number one there right and if you scroll down I think my actual listing is yeah you've got a second one both in the top 10 right but the actual listing I think you know where it has a link to the website and everything is where it's not a picture where it's not, where it's just a listing yeah, under, underneath all of the markets. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that yeah, comes, so here. so that's all of the products kind of come up that way. But if you just Google Via Gaio clothing or Via Gaio women's clothing, I've completely disappeared. Okay, so we I have this one. That's the specific. What I'm asking is give me a different one that does come up on page one. In other words, oh. I want to compare apples to apples. You said just the name via Gaio does not come up. What other name brand does? Um, Inicio. Okay. So dresses. Inicio clothing or Inicio dresses. I N. 
I N I Z I O. So the one that you're saying that you are like 40 pages back, is it just spelling the uh via gallo? Via gallo? So I spell it, say it right. In yeah. other words, yeah. Where's what's the specific term that you come up on that you find yourself like 40 pages back? Via Gallo clothing. Okay. Have you seen something that I've already passed? Did you see you? Yeah, that's at the top. That's like the yeah, I'm not interested in the shop. Oh, there you are. Okay. Okay, so now spell via guy again. V I A A. A. G A L O. You do need to also remember that if you are doing the search, you can get different results than somebody in another city. Correct. And I get a, I get a, on if I do a search, I get a little um, thing at the top, you know, that only I can see, you know, because of my connected analytics or whatever that mm -hmm. tells me how, you know what I mean, what, what my search reach has been and what page I'm on. Mm -hmm. And the search reach is like zero. And I've had nobody click on the link and it's on page 46. Okay, so. And I just can't get that to move. And I You said that you have, you do have a buyer's journey set in for that specific term? Uh, or you do not have buyer's journey at all for that particular? No, I started the buyer's journey for, for Via Gallo clothing. Well, or I, my question was, I think, what is via Gallo clothing? Well, that may not necessarily be what somebody's searching. Find out what somebody's searching first. What is, is always a good uh, generic. Well, they're going to search via Gallo clothing. People aren't specifically searching that, then why build a buyer journey set out of that? Well, they're searching via Gallo clothing. Right. So search something else that they are searching instead of what is. The buyer's journey pages can be about anything. You, It's just like SEO when you're looking at, well, I got to look up a keyword term because I got to figure out what people are searching to for something that I do in my site. So what is, is just an example, but it depends on the product. A lot of products people are searching for, I have no idea what that is. So what is, is pretty common. Now with your dresses, I would imagine that anybody who's looking for the kinds of stuff that you have, they already know what it is. So targeting what is, isn't what you want to do. Does that make sense so far? Okay. I mean, and when you do find a term you need to find out how much competition it has and you can usually get that stuff uh that information from the keyword planner to tell you how much competition whether it's high medium low and if it's a high competition then you want more than one set of buyer's journey pages to complement that particular uh, brand so that you have several different terms that have the buyer's journey and those terms are all working in tandem for that same product. Did I lose you? No. Yes. No. Because you can go several layers deep. 
You would only need to do that if you have high competition. If you've got a lot of competition for that particular brand, then you want more than one set of buyer's journey pages. Okay. I mean, I just, I really just can't figure out why I am pushed back so far. Well, you're right. Because it's but very, it's it's very odd. It, not necessarily, because you take each term, each thing, having related to SEO is going to be, what's the competition like? So every dress, every manufacturer that you have, it's, well, in ISIO, you've got it going. So you are considered the competition for other people who are trying to sell it. Now you have this other one. You need to become the same thing with that one. And the way that you do it is the way that you're going to apply your SEO, which is the buyer's journey at this point. And like I said, you'll get what you want by having multiple sets of the buyer's journey pages. So you've got your, not what is, but something else that people are searching. Then you find another term that people are searching also about that same manufacturer. And put those in, you know, you you match the set, step stage one, two, and three, going to that same page that the first set of buyer's journey pages is uh, um, targeting. Same action page. Right. Well, just just as like in my, in my defense, I understand what you're saying, but that that was one of the the people also searched for what is via Gaio clothing. Okay. So, so that's why I started that's fine. You with just, that. You need more is all. And is it okay. that for local or did you do national? I just did local. It, pardon? I did local. What do you what terms did you use? Um, I think Los Angeles. Okay. So instead of looking now for just the Gallo clothing, you're looking for what is Vigalo Los Angeles. What is Vigalo uh clothing Los Angeles? Do, do you see the uh, the difference? Yeah. And you did use what is? I did use what is because that's. Okay. So. Was one of the, you know, the search options. Edited my search and now I'm going to go here. How long ago did you put in the uh, buyer journey pages? Um, did that come up when you typed that? Do you see it? Yes. So you're on page one, right where you want to be. Interesting. So... That's funny. I never what searched. You, confused, I never searched that. <laughs> what confused you is you're thinking, well, I can do these buyer journey pages and great. I'm going to come up for a national search. No. The whole idea, the whole point of doing the buyer's journey is to begin with a local search. Your page did exactly what it's supposed to do. Maybe okay. it's not the buyer's journey page that came up, but you don't care because it's supported by the buyer's journey page. Searching Los Angeles which is what you targeted, that now is on page one. So pick another city, do the same uh, thing. So would it be not correct to say, do a buyer's journey page that is titled like Via Gallo Dresses Los Angeles. So all those people are searching that, you can make your buyer's journey page about anything you want. But if they're just searching, if they're just searching via Gaio dresses, mm -hmm. which is much broader, mm -hmm. is does that not work as well because it's not targeted? 
to yeah, local? If if no, whatever whatever you're targeting, it's a different keyword term, so you can't compare them. It's a local, so it all depends how many people are searching that. But if you're targeting a whole bunch of different keyword terms all in Los Angeles, then yeah, you're going to come up all over the place if somebody's looking near me or Los Angeles or maybe in the county. Okay. So what you're, if I had switched that term to near me, it wouldn't work. But for you or anybody around your area, when they search near me, then yours is going to come up at the top. Now, eventually, the plan is that uh, while you continue to do this, your pages are going to be looked at from Google. And eventually, you start competing with those who are national. So if somebody is doing Vagalo clothing, eventually that will come up on page one. But when you put in... When you type in the specific term from your uh, buyer's journey that you targeted, that's where you're going to find out when you type in that term, if you're doing well or if you're 200 pages back. And I would bet that you came up in probably two weeks for this specific term. You've probably been there for a while and you didn't know it in that Los Angeles term. Right. When I when I go when I googled that same term, I didn't come up first, but I came up, you know, like ninth. Okay. How long ago did you search? I just searched the same term you just searched, where you oh, came you up. Just, you just did it now. Yeah. And it, that's what happens from one city to the next. Sure. That's why if you if in a great world, we'd be able to call somebody in some other city and say, hey, do this search. Where do I come up? Right, right. I, I used to do that way back in 2000 when I was first going through SEO because I already knew that me searching where I'm located and it's my business, I'm not going to get the results that I want. I need to have somebody else search. So they can say, here is how you come up in the search engine, where you come up in the search engines. You don't get a true um, look as where you come up in the search engines if it's your business and you are searching in Google. Would it be the same in incognito? Have you tried it a lot using incognito and always got these results? Let's see, that's what I'm pointing. I don't know that Google is not watching everything that Chrome is doing and Incognito is doing. So they already know your IP. That's why it, even if you don't give it to them, if you say block, block, block every time that they ask, they still get it. Because they go, oh, I see your, no, that's not my city, but it's close. You got my IP. Yeah, I know. And they do that. I can imagine that they do it with Incognito. It's their browser. Why wouldn't they? I I don't, I have no way to prove that either way. Unless I sat down with two or three people who are in different parts of the country and we just went through. Them. But that's really what it takes. I wouldn't be surprised if you found out that, oh yeah, they're tracking uh, incognito too. Yeah. You're, you're, thinking that they play by the rules. They do not. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> well, Google plays by their rules. Yes. Yeah. And Google has a complete, completely different set of rules for you and them. You can't do all, but we can. Okay, so does that solve some stuff for you then, Barbara? Well, I don't know if it solves it. It gives me more to do. So <laughs> I love it when I can make you do more work. Right. <laughs> but it does work. It, it's I, it's it's that one we like I just don't understand why that one brand has gotten so stuck back. 
I think it, it is directly related to your competition. If there is a lot more competition for that specific brand, then you have to pull out the big guns. That's why I say, add another buyer's journey group to that same brand. Make it a, a different keyword, make it a different city. Okay. Maybe um, somewhere in New York, even New York City for that matter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're ranking in Los Angeles, you're doing pretty well. Yeah. So I, nothing to sneeze at. So I'm sitting here going, you're not having a problem that you think you are. Well, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm not necessarily having a problem because the, yeah. the merchant is really good. And I think people are using that a lot more. When I look at my analytics and, you know, my merchant, I mean, people, you know, buyers are very visual, I think. And if they see the item they want, they click on it. Yep. Um, so I'm. I it it's just so funny because and and I have to tell you there's other brands that I have that have that are bigger brands and have more competition and I am not on page forty six I might not be on page one but I'm like on two or three mm -hmm. so this particular brand I really don't understand because it's not a very big brand it doesn't have a lot of search most of it is one to you know one to a hundred for keywords or even less some are one to 10 what what's the age of your page for that particular brand compared to some of your others uh it might be newer i just started carrying it in the last two years okay so, i mean that definitely could be a factor it, and if I, i'm going to you might not think this is, is great news, but if you found your site on page 40, and I'll say that even broader, if you found your site in under 100 pages back in Google, that's, a, and it's national, it's not local, which most of your stuff is national. So if you find that in under page 100, you already know where your work is because Google has found you and said, Yes, you're doing pretty well. But now you need to focus on doing more SEO for that specific brand to get it up to page one. To really goose it. Because if you do find any of your pages on a on less than page 100, now you know you can do something with that page. If you are more than 100 pages, Google's not even going to list you anywhere. So it's like, I have no idea where I am. That's the hard part. When you know you're in position 40, great. There's not that much work. 10 listings per page. So you want to work on that page and get that thing pushed up into, even if you can hit page two, now you know you're really close. Or page three, even page five, whatever it right. is. Right, right, right. But you know you're on page 40. So it's now a matter of, okay, push harder on that SEO. What you might want to try is try for a state. So if you have Los Angeles, try San Diego, San Francisco, Fresno. Right. Try to corner all the states in California and see if you can rank at the state level and then bring it up national. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I, I thank you guys for for the input even though i know you're not wearing dresses to my knowledge so. <laughs> it's a product it's a paint but, but it's yeah, yeah i mean it's like that's you know it's like you you're definitely going to take the um emotional attachment out of it mm -hmm. you know and just like 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 it's just it's all nuts and bolts mm -hmm. and that's where i was i'm just getting like what do I do with this? Because I know people are searching via Gaio clothing. Why aren't I there? <laughs> okay. You are and you're not. That's that's the thing. So it's just a matter of you pushing harder, doing more buyer's journey pages. And you can see already buyer's journey. We've got two people who, here, who are here in the meeting that have already confirmed buyer's journey pages work. Yes, they do. Three people yeah. probably. I think, Robert, you said that you've got some that, that actually worked. Isn't that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a native plant and butterfly garden blog, and I used to just you know, blog about the species and the gardens, and 
you know, post went out into a black hole, but then when I started targeting specific locations like a city or a county, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was getting number one rankings in those cities. And that's the thing, Barbara, that's what's going to give you faster authority is targeting local. Those pages come up pretty quick. Okay. Two or three weeks, maybe even less, depends okay. on the competition. So if you're targeting San Francisco and probably a couple, three different areas in, in the Bay Area and Beverly Hills, as well as Los Angeles and San Diego, just like Robert was saying, big cities, watch it come up fast. And because you start hitting these cities and uh, you're at the top of the search engines there, that gives you great authority. So Google starts looking at your site going, well, it's not just in this city, it's in this city. So it's national. Okay. So your page starts coming up better. Okay. I'll I'll work on that um, and, and try and dial it in and see if I get any, see what kind of movement I get on it. It's, it's good because it's one specific thing. So I'm like not all over the map trying to figure it yes. out. You're so I can really right. target it and watch that. That's what's really good about what you're doing right now. You are working on just that one. And like we've talked about in weeks past, you can target whatever city that you want. Yeah. I've even mentioned before, Los Angeles is a pretty wide area. So that's a good one, especially because you're up high. But you can go in and, and target Beverly Hills. Like I said before, you know darn good and well, there's money there. They're looking for those dresses. Right. Or I should say that the hired help is looking for whoever they work for. <laughs> yeah, think of it as uh, building a bridge or a stool. You know, each city is its oh. a leg. Yeah. And that the seat is the state or the ultimate thing you want to rank for. Right. So the more legs you build, the stronger it'll be. Okay. Well, I'll work on on that that one that one thing. And hopefully next time I attend, I'll have I'll have interesting news, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to, you won't even come back because you'll be on cloud night. Oh, my pages are up on the top even now. Mark, I don't need them anymore. <laughs> yeah, you don't need us anymore. Thanks a lot. But I will say, if you're ranking in Los Angeles, you're doing pretty good. Because in my, my case, I was targeting kind of mid-sized cities. And I tackled a post with San Diego, and uh, that was a bit too large for me where I was. Yeah, so again, number one there, I got about six or seven. It really depends on the product or service that you're targeting as to how well you can do in a larger city. That's why it's right. always, you know, you if you yours, Barbara, you can work with larger cities because you've already got quite a bit of authority in the in site and a lot of the pages. Right. And I, and I think that's the problem is because I am national and I've had, you know, good ranking for most mm -hmm. of the brands and things that I do, I'm like perplexed. I, I feel like I'm going backwards, but I understand it. And it's just the thing that Google is doing. And I got to play, you know what I mean? I got to, I got to play Google's field. Right. So, and, and this, you know, this one has caught me, you know, so I'm going to reverse engineer it and I'm going to work on it. And it, it makes me worried for my other brands though. And I feel like just to be on the safe side, even the brands that I'm ranking on page one, I need to, because if somebody's getting wise, that is my competition and starts putting in buyer's journeys, it could push me down. Maybe. But the uh, chances of somebody outside of our group knowing how to put in buyer's journey <laughs> is slim and none. I, the, I, I just don't see people targeting buyer's journey. Uh, I don't see web developers targeting buyer's journey. And yet I jumped on it more than a year ago because I saw the writing on the wall. And it's a whole lot easier, and you tell me, I'm going to finish that sentence, it's a whole lot easier doing the buyer's journey than it is trying to apply SEO on a page, isn't it? Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. And faster to do it, faster to get results. So it's like, you know, 
Stop beating your head against the wall with SEO. I know I've done it for 25 years. That's why I don't have any hair up on the top of my head there. I've been beating my head against the wall too many times. So well, with thank Byer's you guys, journey, for sure. With Buyer's Journey, I, you, you can get results a lot faster. So yeah. when you're on page 40, like I say, if you're in the running. You just need to check that page and compare how well the SEO was on that page compared to one of your sites or one of your pages that does really well nationally. It's they're they're all the same. I've really done, you know, I have I have replicated them based on you know, obviously name ch brand changes or if there's something specific that the brand does, you know, like if they're known for their prints or whatever, I'll put the brand in the print name and for SEO, but my SEO is pretty, uh, pretty much the same brand per brand. Templated. Yes. You've got to be careful with that. You don't want to make all the pages with the content so similar that you're just changing this one and changing that one. Well, I mean, there's um, like, I'm going to have hold on a second. You, yeah. you've, been, you've been using AI to create your buyer's journey pages, right? Uh, yes. And then I correct them. Hopefully not too much. Well, sometimes the word, the verbiage is just not correct. And it's not the way I would say it. Okay. Um, we've done over the last several months, we've done a lot of things with trying to perfect the way that we can prepare AI to write articles, simply jumping in and saying, write an article for the buyer's journey, uh, awareness stage about Viago dress or Viago clothing. That's not good enough anymore. There's a whole slew of warming up AI, getting it to understand, here's the subject matter. This is something about this subject, and let's discuss this subject. So you're doing all that before you say, now write it, the buyer's journey. Because it brings- AI persona. In, pardon? AI persona. And the persona, because it brings in a lot of information to AI. So AI has a great idea of what you're trying to do. And then you could say, okay, now write my article. Does that make sense? And I would- So are you, are you writing small articles? I don't understand. Nope. I'm going and to- I, and, I, and I missed these sessions. So I don't want you to necessarily, you know, don't regurgitate everything everybody's heard before. I'm not, I'm going to, going to send you, actually, I'll, I'll put this in there for everybody. It is something you might want to try with your dresses since you're in California is try to talk about unique aspects of the dresses. Like, you know, you have different climates in California, like Palm Springs, you'd want dresses that can handle the heat. But if you're walking in San Francisco where it's cooler, then you might want to adjust it so you don't get, you know, dinged for duplicate content. Right. Of course. to yep that's the one okay all right everybody um in chat there is a txt file now the subject is vyp phones so don't worry about that you can change the subject to whatever you want the idea is that as you read it I've made sure to show, here's the first prompt, here's the next prompt, here's the next prompt, here's the next prompt. And the stuff in between is what AI is telling me. And this was through BARD. The idea behind the whole thing is just to warm it up. And after all that chatting, then you can say, now write articles. Write an article for the buyer's journey in the uh, awareness stage about whatever it is. But you can call it whatever that you want. We've 
title it several different things. Mostly it's, um, you know, like taking AI to dinner in a movie. That's saying it nicely, but you're, you're trying to warm it up. So it's, is this a warm up for like each? It's the foreplay for whatever subject that you're going to. Well, this is much harder than SEO. Pardon? <laughs> this is much harder than SEO. No, it's not because it's no, all no, no. done for no, really. you. You just change the prompts. And it that whole thing, because it's already laid out for you, that whole thing you can do in five minutes. Prompt, oh, okay. All prompt, right. Prompt, boom, prompt, answer, prompt, answer, prompt, answer. How fast can you do that? Okay. Okay. I gotcha. And the idea is, like I say, you're just trying to get AI to bring in a tremendous amount of information related to the specific subject that you're that you want articles for okay and the articles come out so much better and you can see the personas bard has a sense of humor i didn't say anything about making something funny i just said make you know create these personas and then you start reading those personas Oh yeah, they're very funny. But even that part, you look at it and you go, well, that gives me an idea about something else that I could do. Great, that's the whole point. You and AI are having a conversation and both of you are learning what the people are who are looking for what I'm doing. And then you the, the lights start going off and you're going, oh, I wanna do, and then you're off and running. And the more that you do that, the better it is to uh, go, you know, spend a few minutes with AI so that you can really get good articles. Okay. We found obviously over the months that if you just go to any one of the AI and say, write an article on blah, blah. Yeah. It's pretty so-so. And you may yeah. have a lot of editing. When you, when you get these articles written after all this warm up. You'd be surprised. You go, you know, I don't see anything that I want to change. Okay. But you might, maybe a word here or there, but the idea is play with it. And and that's what, you know, people, Kevin has uh, done a lot. I originally did this for Kevin, but I kind of made it generic so that anybody could use it. Um. But the more you play with it and the more ideas that you get, the more time you end up spending with AI going, oh, now I know how to do this and this comes out really good. So I'm going to, do okay, whatever works for you. I feel like in my boutique group, I have the potential for a, for a different stream of revenue for myself. <laughs> <laughs> doing pages for them well good for other boutique owners say, Ooh, i have a better way of um, making these articles for you well it's not it's not even the articles it's like they're they're still the the all of the chatter in these groups and among boutique owners is all about the seo so I feel like since I'm I'm not going to, they're not going to do pages and I'm not necessarily going to share it, I could say I can perhaps help you boost your visibility. There you go. That's all I'm saying is that it's another stream of revenue. It is, I'm keeping my mouth. In an industry that I understand, you know, so I, I under, I, I understand I'm learning about, um, I understand the industry and I'm learning about the, um, uh, you know, buyer's journey. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, it's a different approach to other than saying, improve your SEO. I, I knew Maury was going to have something to say. He just sent me a message. <laughs> Of the very stuff that you were talking about, that, but you could definitely pursue, as he was saying, topographical silos and creating content for them. So there's a bunch of different ways that you could turn that into a way that you would be doing your group a favor, but charging for it. Of course. And 
You... And since you seem to think no, but not too many people are are looking at this, you know, seriously, let's put it that way. I'm sure boutique owners who can't figure out what COD means. <laughs> yeah, but... I had a, well, there was a boutique owner that said I had a shipment and they were sending it COD. I don't understand what that means. And I'm going, oh my goodness, are you really in business? <laughs> I There are a lot of people who probably don't. Something else came to mind not too long ago that somebody did that. And I thought, wow, I can't believe you don't know what that means. So anyway, my point is that I, you know, if I decide to transition out of my business, here is a stream of revenue. There you go. That. Well, so who else is having trouble with their, oh, we're out of time, it seems. Um, there we go. I hope that it actually helped you guys with the, the issues that people are having. So Ellen, you always look like you're contemplating something. Did that help you? Did they help? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's good to know how the how the search part of it works. But um, yeah, the prompt the prompt is always helpful. Yeah, <clears throat> Marinella, I always see your image in, in yours, and I'm like, you always that image that picture of you looks like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so I keep looking at like, well, don't give me that look. <laughs> I, I find these meetings very, I don't know, relaxing. <laughs> Even if I already know some of the stuff, although I have to admit uh, buyer's journey was, was new for me. Um, so I'm, ex I've started experimenting with them, but it's, it's just really good to connect um, with people who are doing the same thing you're doing. And um, I, I I have to compliment you, Tom, on the way you speak. So many people are so aggressive and it's all about <laughs> conversion. Uh, we got to attack. We got to conquer. So I really like your approach. Now, and that's why thank I you. join whenever I. It, it comes from a lot of years of, of listening and knowing that there are problems and you have to make sure that people can spit it out. And then they're not going to get it if you talk techie terms to them. So I don't, I try hard not to do that. If I do use a tech term, then I make sure that I'm going to explain it. So people go, oh, that's what that means. Yeah, but I just try not to talk techie. It works better. And thank you. I try to make it a relaxing atmosphere so people can learn easier. You have a new background, content, writing, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Well, there you go, folks. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And it uh, looks like next week is supposed to be networking. So there you go. We'll have a bye week. <laughs> so bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. You take it easy. <laughs>